This is Jack Moman, and today is uh, the 6th of July, 2014. We're in the Hyatt Hotel in Indianapolis uh, as part of the 2014 uh, ATOS convention. We've all had a pretty good time. We're a little tired, but uh, we're enjoying all of the music. And we have with us uh, an interesting person. His name is Bill Cole, Dr. Bill Cole. And um, he is uh, newly elected, appointed vice chairman of the board of directors of ATOS. Uh, he first really got involved in it, uh, working the election nomination process. And then on the budget committee, and he's, a, he's an educator by background, I think that's the primary thing. That's what you brag about all the time. <laughs> so uh, welcome, Bill. And uh, let's just start out, because you're into music and everything, otherwise you wouldn't be here. How did you first get involved in music? Well, first of all, thank you, Jack, for the opportunity to, uh, to be interviewed. Uh, my musical career goes way back to uh, about fifth grade. Uh, in fourth grade, we all had the pleasure of learning tonette, and uh, I was fortunate enough to have a neighbor lady uh, who was musically inclined, and she suggested uh, that I that I take up the clarinet. Uh, so I did that in fifth grade, played clarinet and oboe and saxophone uh, all the way through school. I was a clarinet major, education major uh, at uh, the University of Michigan. Uh, subsequent to that, well, during my, I might as well move into theater audience at that point, if that's okay. Sure. Um, after, after doing uh, all kinds of vocal and instrumental music for years, um, going to the University of Michigan, I also was involved, um, in, having grown up near Flint, Michigan, uh, with the Butterfield Special Barton that was in the Capitol Theater, and that was the first theater pipe organ that I ever played. Um, I actually made the transition to organ playing by accident. Uh, I had never had a piano at home, but in my senior year of high school, uh, I was scheduled to take a trip to Europe as a senior trip, the uh, the travel company went belly up at the last moment, so I ended up with a refund. So here's a senior in high school with money and nowhere to spend it. Uh, at the exact same time, uh, a good friend of ours uh, had an organ for sale, and on the spur of the moment, I purchased it and uh, basically was self-taught at that juncture, and uh, and then went to university and got involved with with the Barton and uh, studied with uh, Father Jim Miller. And was spoiled by playing the Senate Theater and playing the Fox, and uh, had a, had a great time of it. Uh, and at that point, I went into teaching. I became a band and choir director, and a professional musician. I played and conducted uh, extensively uh, in, in the Flint, Michigan area, doing lots of musical theater, uh, both conducting and, and playing in the pit, and uh, at the same time uh, having a career as a school band director. And, uh, did that for many years and. Ended up with a, a master's degree in conducting from Oakland University, and then went on with my studies and eventually went into school administration. Well, that, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, now, did you go out to concerts or anything like that? On a limited basis. I'm I'm so busy. I retired uh, four and a half years ago uh, as a superintendent of schools in Michigan, and uh, moved out to Northern California. I live right next to Berkeley. Um, was chair of NorCal for a couple of years. Uh, also involved in the Sierra chapter out there, but I also got involved with, uh, you know, Ed Stout and Dick Taylor. So I've, mm -hmm. I've worked for them for the last three and a half years. Mm -hmm. So I was up to my neck in in uh, organ rebuilds and rebuilding and installing 32 foot diaphones and the mm -hmm. like. Um, so extremely busy, and um, that probably moves us into my most recent. Uh, challenge with life in terms of, of my activities, and once I get through this next chapter of my life, hopefully I'll be doing some more. I guess we never work. said where you where you live, where you're from. Yes, I was uh, born and raised in Michigan, about an hour north of Detroit. And then uh, you currently live? Currently live in El Cerrito, which is just next to Berkeley in Northern California. Okay. What, uh, what, what do you think of... Uh, the theater organ these days and how it's being presented and uh, attendance and that that sort of thing. Well, attendance is a big challenge, as everybody knows, and uh, it's been interesting because I also sub subscribe to the uh, the UK uh, group on on Facebook, and similar discussions go on there, and and very pointed discussions in terms of the, the in some people's minds the sanctity of the, the theater organ performance or the cinema organ performance, whereas where it's presented as a solo concert program. 
And, and perhaps, it's, perhaps it's important to note that historically, that was not what the theater organ was about at all. And so that's been a transformation that we think is important to, to, to keep imposing that on people. Personally, I don't agree. Uh, I mean, last year I did a program and had a trumpeter uh, on the program. Mm -hmm. and, and my philosophy is, you know, variety is the spice of life. Mm -hmm. I don't think that adding groups uh, takes away from the organ. And, and again, as a former band and choir director, I think it's really critical that to help ensure the success of ATOS, to expose the wonders of the theater pipe organ uh, to new people, that it's, it's critical that we engage with groups that perhaps we haven't traditionally mm -hmm. engaged with. And, and that means, you know, can you get a theater organ involved with a musical theater performance? Can you get a theater pipe organ involved with a jazz band performance, a concert band performance, a wind symphony, uh, a community choir, maybe a countywide assemblage of musicians, mm -hmm. whether vocalists or instrumentalists, or all the above. And I think it's all healthy, and I think it's all good. It, it really is, because I'm going to do one in November, <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to have a drummer and a sax player. It happens to be the same person, a vocal soloist, uh, a silent movie, short, comedy, a sing-along with the words on the screen, and another organist come in and make a cameo appearance. And my theory, like yours, is the more variety you have, the uh, the more you might uh, attract people to come to it. Because exactly. You know, I, I, th I think we're both right, and, and kind of my linchpin with this whole discussion is the discussion should not be how do we get people to suddenly like theater organ. You know, a person on the street has basically no reason to walk in the door to hear something that they have no knowledge of. But if you can combine, again, in, in the, the performance venue, you can interface with those other types of groups. That's the established connection that you can easily latch onto. So the folks may come in the door to hear their grandchild sing in the chorus, but you've got them in front of the theater pipe organ at that point. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's, it's all about getting a person in the door the first time. Because if you don't get them in the door the first time... They won't come back. That's exactly right. It's so. sort of like opera, you know. <clears throat> a lot of people go to opera because they want to be seen by somebody else that they're there. <laughs> Well, that's why I go. No. <laughs> uh, what 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 is it that we can do uh, to further this thing? I mean, uh, I, I think we need to to do a better job in the, in the realm of communication. I mean, I think we really have to leverage electronic communication, push technologies where instead of expecting somebody to uh, to visit a website or to look up an information, um, if you can push that out to them and and share the wealth. Uh, we need to share success stories, whether it's American-based or UK-based, wherever successful presentations are going on, uh, we need to share those ideas because nobody needs to reinvent the wheel. There are ways to do programs that will be successful. In fact, I was talking to somebody in, in terms of, um, well, David Peckham is one who's done a number of programs with a concert band. Um, and I was talking, I think I was talking with David, I talked with other folks, and if I ever had any spare time, one of my projects would be to aggregate a list of uh, established wind literature that that have uh, organ parts, and there are a number of them, mm -hmm. and most people are totally unaware that those even exist. And again, that's a quick way to get that interface going between a wind ensemble concert band or an orchestra and the theater pipe organ, and it can be very successful. Uh, let's talk ATOS. You know, we keep talk, trying to get new people, new people to join ATOS, and we have a board of directors that you're new to now. Uh, what, what in the management of ATOS do you think uh, can be improved over and above the way it is today? What, what well, again, coming from the realm of education, I mean, I was the, basically the, the CEO of, of, a, of an organization that had 250 employees and a $23 million annual budget. You, to ensure success, to ensure efficiency, there there needs there need to be processes in place that that help move things forward. Um, I mean, my experience has been that when you have decades of experience with what primarily has been a volunteer organization, um, things get done in a different way than than normally would be accepted uh, in the business world. Mm -hmm. And so, I think one thing we need to do is is move into that realm of being more businesslike being more professional, being more organized, 
um, and, and we're headed in the right direction. I mean, we're doing the right things too. Yeah, I, I look at it because I've been involved in this for quite a while, is you have to sit back and say of what we're doing, what is the value added? And is it worth it or are we just trying to keep busy? Absolutely right. And I've asked questions in terms of, of my involvement uh, with the budget committee and, and some other aspects of, of ATOS leadership. And, you know, it begs the question, and, and the upcoming retreat is should be a, a tremendous mm -hmm. help in terms of focusing uh, on these issues. And one of the issues is, do we, do we even know as an organization really what our priorities are? Mm -hmm. The next question that follows behind that is, once we've established those priorities, are we allocating the resources, whether it's you know human resource, money, you name it, mm -hmm. so that those things can be successful? Uh, we, can, we can never be all things to all people, um, but we need to have a very clear direction, mm -hmm. and we need to, to focus on that. And also, it's important to have some metrics in place in terms of measurement. I mean, every program that we offer, there should be metrics where we can say, yes, this is a successful program because, and mm -hmm. I'm not just saying because I feel better by watching it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you need to quantify specifically and, and measure so that you, you really do have a true gauge of, of success. Well, you know, we've been doing these interviews like we're doing with you today, and it's going to go on YouTube. And <clears throat> we have a variety of people that might end up seeing this. One group is somebody, your friends, you can say, go. Both of them. Yeah. <laughs> go and see what this is. Yes. It's, uh, it's going to be a link on my website so people can go see it there. It uh, would, might be on our, the ATOS website. And there might be somebody that just runs into this thing. Absolutely. Oh, it would be. And, let me, my phone's ringing. I normally don't stop these uh, recordings, but they, and we don't start over ever, but the phone rang and I had to answer it. Anyway, I think I was talking about YouTube, and there's a part of the audience that might just happen on this by accident and, uh, and know nothing about what we're talking about. Uh, what, what, what would you... Uh, what would you say about YouTube as a... I, I think YouTube is absolutely tremendous. Most of the, uh, the music that I play is in public domain, so I don't have copyright issues, fortunately. I do have a YouTube channel, and it's been a, I haven't really checked the hits, but I know that I've had well in excess of 100,000 views of my videos. So I, whether people have lived after watching them, I, I can't attest to that. But it's a tremendous tool, and... You know, we have to look, even though we're an old organization, we have to look to the future uh, with an eye to the past. Um, and YouTube is a tremendous tool. I've, I've had people contact me uh, over and over again as a result of running across mm -hmm. those YouTube videos. And people will do a global search. And uh, in fact, with the, the 4th of July holiday, I just, uh, a, a Facebook friend of mine posted one of my videos mm -hmm. as kind of a salute to, to the nation's birthday. So those are all great things because it spreads the word. Why don't you talk about the subject we just talked about? Yes, my, I was mentioning uh, not, not doing much playing at the moment, and uh, that's because I'm up to my ears in writing the biography of George Wright. I've been at work at it for about eight months now. Uh, I'm hoping that I can finish it and have a book release, a uh, panel discussion, and a book signing at next year's Philadelphia Convention, if possible. Now, now if, assuming somebody just happened to watch this, why don't you just briefly, who is George Wright? George Wright, uh, next to Jesse Crawford, probably is the, the most legendary theater organist uh, in United States history. He was uh, a, a, a child prodigy, went to Grant Union High School in uh, Sacramento, California, went on to play the San Francisco Fox, went on to play the New York Paramount for about four years, uh, came back to L.A. and was organist on General Hospital for, I, I think, about 12 years, um, sold well in excess of a million records, and uh, is revered by the theater organ community. So this is a book um, that many times was said somebody needs to write it and nobody stepped up to the plate. I was fortunate enough to be in the right place at the right time and um, thanks to the generosity of uh, Wendell Jacob of Davis, California, uh, the book has a financial backer and it will hopefully again go in publication in July of 2015. And there's a lot of discussion. I've been very, very busy having discussions with folks I want to give credit. Uh, at this point in time, we have five individuals working on the book. Uh, Mark Renwick and Brett Pratt are working on a complete discography, 
and a complete cross-referenced tune list. So basically anything George ever recorded uh, will end up in the book. Um, Richard Rogers, who was a colleague of George's uh, when George was playing con organs for the con organ company. Uh, I interviewed Richard in St. Louis, a tremendous guy, um, absolutely totally organized, and uh, he was gracious enough to contact me uh, after I got back to California after our interview, offering his services. And uh, so he's going to be doing a great deal of proofing and editing, also working with some of the graphics in the book. And then just a few weeks ago, I was contacted via Facebook uh, about the possibility of an individual doing uh, artwork for the cover of the book. And uh, that individual happened to be Robert Hope Jones, hmm. uh, great-grandnephew of the Robert Hope Jones. So I was absolutely thrilled and honored uh, for Robert to step forward and do that. So uh, it's an exciting project, and I think folks uh, I can guarantee from my in-depth research I've been doing, I've been all across the country doing uh, interviews. I have probably 120 hours of interviews uh, taped. Uh, I've been to New York uh, to the archives at Lincoln Center. I've been to the Oscars archives in Beverly Hills uh, and, and done a tremendous amount of online research as well. And I can guarantee that people will find things out in the book that, that, that nobody's seen and, and nobody knew. So it's, it's an exciting venture for me. <laughs> You're having fun doing it, having too? Having a terrific time. Anyway, uh, I think we need to bring this to a close. And uh, we certainly thank you, uh, Dr. Bill Cole from uh, California, now a new vice chairman of the ATOS Board of Directors. And, and uh, I hope uh, we're by all... By the way, Jack, I, I thought I was asked to be the chairman of vice. So. Chairman of Vice, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> this organization can be full of that, too. But anyway, uh, this is um, July 6th, a Sunday. Weather's very nice here in Indianapolis, uh, California, California, Indianapolis, Indiana. July 6th, 2014, Jack Moman here, and uh, uh, we look forward to great things from you, Bill. Thank you, Jack. Much appreciated.